Pakistani celebrated the 72nd birthday of the beloved son of the soil, national hero, international cricketing legend, philanthropist extraordinaire, Pakistan's legitimate Prime Minister Imran Khan, as they assembled at Islamabad's Dechak to protest the unconstitutional amendments that the country's illegitimate regime is trying to pass, which will make Pakistan a complete authoritarian state. Mr. Khan has been under arbitrary arrest for 427 days. Protesters cut cakes amidst their gas and rubber bullets being fired on them by the capital police, while netizens took to social media platforms to pay tribute to their murshid or mentor and guide. In Lahore, citizens put up banners for Mr. Khan and celebrated with fireworks. After being subjected to heavy tear gassing and rubber bullets, Pakistani protesters in Islamabad continued their resistance well into the wee hours of Saturday morning. Pakistanis were still in the streets braving the regime's onslaught and the peaceful demonstration, telling the world that these protests are against the military government's plan to illegally amend the constitution and turn Pakistan into a totalitarian state. Global media coverage of PTI's protests at the d in Islamabad shows that the world is seeing roads blocked, cell phone services disrupted and clashes between police and protesters. This is what the imposed regime chose to do instead of allowing Pakistan's largest and most popular political party to exercise its right. Pakistan Tariq Saf Information Secretary Sheikh Vakas Akram announced early on Friday evening that protests in Islamabad would continue through the night and on Saturday. Ali Amin Khan Gandapur, the chief minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, would then reach Dechok on Saturday with his convoy. He added that the Lahore protest would take place at Minare Park Pakistan on Saturday as planned, with all central Punjab districts joining. Meanwhile, all other districts of Punjab were asked to hold protests in their own respective areas on Saturday. PTI's president for Punjab, Mia Hamad Azhar, echoed these plans on Friday evening as well. The resistance to fascism this time round is vigorous. Pakistanis know that the future is at stake. Islamabad-based reporter Abdul Qadir, who has covered protests for years, said he has never seen such determination from ordinary citizens. Other reporters on ground, such as Sadiq Jan and Hasnan Rafiq echoed similar sentiments. Meanwhile, CM Gandapur's convoy was once again attacked in the morning by Pakistan security forces with tear gas and pellet gun ammunition used to normally hunt animals, the use of which was protested by Pakistan when Indian occupied forces used these pellets against Kashmiri resistance. There have been reports that the Pakistani government has authorized military to fire live ammunition on unarmed protesters. This is a developing story. Police and paramilitary forces entered and attacked the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa House in Islamabad at the behest of Pakistan's military-backed regime. This is an attack on the federal structure of Pakistan. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, as a province of Pakistan, has jurisdiction over KP House, not federal agencies. PDI Secretary Information Sheikh Waqas has termed this an attack on the honor of millions of citizens of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, but that no amount of brutality would, quote, stop us from exercising our constitutionally guaranteed right to protest, end quote. Police also barged into PTI's parliamentary leader, Zartaj Gul Wazir's home in Punjab and forcibly took her. Meanwhile, the people of Lahore are responding to Khan's call and reaching Minare, Pakistan, despite all police brutality. There are reports of severe tear gassing and firing from security forces. However, there was limited communication from the ground at the time of filing of this report due to cell phone and internet shutdown across the province. And in Islamabad, citizens have continued to face state brutality as the protest at the Dechok in very low large numbers. Six members of the Pakistan Bar Council have expressed their concern and strongly condemned the first information report lodged against respectable lawyers, including Barrister Gohar Ali Khan, Barrister Salman Akram Raja, Zubair Ahmed, Tayyab Mustafa, Kazmi, Nazrullah Niazi, Chaudhry Ishtiaq Ahmed Khan, Sardar Latif Khosa, and other respectable individuals by law enforcement agencies on Thursday. Islamabad police has charged PTI lawyers with terrorism over protests outside the Supreme Court where some people had burned an effigy of Pakistan's controversial Chief Justice Qazi Faiz Isa. Members of the U.S. House of Representatives Susan Wilde, John James, and co-chair of the Congressional Pakistan Caucus Jack Bergman have written a letter to President Joe Biden urging action on House Resolution 901 in support of a change in U.S. policy on Pakistan. The letter calls for a change in leadership of the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad, stating that Ambassador Donald Bloom has failed to address concerns of the Pakistani-American community.